Hello for everyone watching the stream. We um, suddenly stopped because the rig, if I rig, did not want to work. And that is because we switch around uh, collections, layers, namings, and pl um, placed in different um, orders things that should not be changed. Just like I mentioned before, whatever you do, please have it under your own um, immediate collection. Don't create any subfolders or any sub collections. Generate everything at scene level. For some reason, I already mentioned this in the stream. Um, there is no way for Rigify to know when it has to go and search and find um, different sub levels of the collection, and therefore it breaks. So, since we um, make progressive saves, just like I mentioned in the stream, we went back before generating everything, and this is where we had our issue with the rotation. As you can see, I brought it. I brought this model from Softimage, which gives me a 90 degree rotation angle. That's why whenever we rigged the the model, it used to um, go to this position because we did not freeze the rotation. So that's what we're going to do right now. Besides, the other factor that is that we did not, or rather, we are not going to move the metal rig around. We are not going to place it in any subfolder at all. This is Blender 283 and this is the conclusion for the stream. This is how it should have been uh, ended. Although I expect you to um, really uh, take a look at that stream because there we spoke a lot of uh, technical details, technical aspects. So what we're going to do right now is to generate the rig. Right now we don't have any subfolder. We have not changed any names. And by the way, we uh, unparented the um, two levels um, of parenting that this model originally had with empties or nulls. So right now this is the body, this is plain, plain body. And also we renamed this mesh at C, uh, object level because this is the scene level and this is the object level. So just drag and drop this name and it will automatically get renamed. Also, please delete just the name so we have fewer things to deal with. And of course, I need to fix this because um, the colon is not used. So I'm going to do that as well. I have to do it one by one because in this case, there's no way for me to replace directly. Although I think I can. Um, I think it's called the prefix. Well, I just don't want to risk it in another video. You can press Ctrl F2 by selecting a batch selection. And then from that batch selection, select... Uh, rename, new name in our case, and then we can name this all accordingly. So we have all that, we have our body, and now we need to freeze the transformation. So object, apply, apply all transforms. And finally, the body did not move. This is the expected behavior. This is what we want. We want to freeze every, every transform we have here. Let's do that exactly with the same um, steps on the head. So let's go again, object, apply, or you can press Ctrl A, and then from this pop-up menu, which you could have it active on your Pi menus, and your general UI Pi menus, and you're gonna go and apply all transforms, which is right here, apply all. Okay, with that you froze, okay, every every transformation. So from there on, if you notice, your your pivot point or your origin point is going to be all the way down here. If you click the body, as well, it's going to be round there. So if I grab the rotation tool, you're going to see it's not going to rotate from this point. Uh, it's going to rotate from this point. Okay, so that's basic. And that's exactly what we need. We need every mesh that we bring here in Blender uh, to be uh, with a concise name, short name rather. As a matter of fact, let me even shorten it even more. Stylized body. And of course, the head, I'm going to just go call it just head because later on we're going to deal with this as well so again here just head so now let's generate the rig so I'm going to go to generate rig press generate rig after selecting the meta rig which is the base like we spoke before this is the modular rigging system that blender has rig has been generated I'm not going to do anything else at this point except by selecting my body which of course it's empty of vertex groups and now shift click select Control P and then automatic weights and this should um, work straight out, out of the bat. So let's select the, the rig, press tab, go into post mode, select your foot and in this case if you're um, moving it right there it should 
move without a problem. So you see that everything that has to do with rigging, please, at first try, whenever you're first generating this, please generate it in the same collection that the original um, um, meta rig was created. If you start moving around, and this was the mistake on the on the stream, I started to move around collections before generating everything. Now that you have uh, created your rig, and now that the meta rig is no longer needed, now you can start moving things around. You can move your body, move your head, move everything around. So let's just do that. Let's go to the head, and um, I'm going to switch to object mode. I'm going to select the head, select the rig, control P, and automatic weights. And this, of course, will assign all of the, the former bones, bones to, uh, let me just, uh, activate this in front we'll assign all of the former bones to the head so that means that if we uh, click on the rig and then press tab pose mode and then we're going to click this one the jawbone and now we're going to if you notice uh, because this was a question I had many years ago like how do blender users know which axis they need to rotate well it happens so that we don't need the manipulators such as this case we can work only with the tweak tool but in order for us to know how do we roll and I'm sorry that's a pun intended um, you press R to get to immediate mode for rotation and then if you notice here this red axis is the X axis and you can read it right right here all also as well the X axis is the one that is going to give us the roll for the horizontal or rather the uh, up and down transformations for rotation. So what you do here in Blender is to press R, X, and then press the shift key here on your keyboard, and then you move your cursor up or down. That's it. You can only move your cursor in two dimensions, up or down. And that is how we roll slowly this uh, axis. And you can see it right there. You can see the cross line, the red line, across the entire viewport because right now we're rotating in the X axis. So if I let go of shift, because shift is um, incremental, um, small degrees amount, it's like it's pressing a, a break or a smoothness to the transformation. But if I let go this key, then your rotation is going to be much harsh, much larger, and then you can try whatever you want. So that's it. Now uh, we need to talk about the weights. I'm going to be recording this as the continuation for the issue that we had. And of course, let me save this in an incremental. So this is going to be 5.3. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what I'm doing, um, you should go first and watch the previous stream where we covered a lot of technical stuff. But I'm going to rush in and go into all the details that we need to figure here to complete our rig. So we have two, two meshes, the head and then the body and we have additional meshes to create additional bones now that our rig has been generated we can generate new bones in edit mode to rig those other things but we're going to worry about that right after we first deal with the transformation and the deforms of this body so i'm going to select this one and just um, test out how everything is going on here so as you can see this this handle is not cl correctly aligned now, right now, it's set to IK. If I go all the way to here, it's set to forward kinematic. And we already spoke about color coding here on, on Blender about the bones groups. The bone groups, the green ones, are forward kinematics. And that's what we're using right now. So I'm going to click this one, which is also green. And of course, that's going to hint me, that's going to tell me this one is a forward kinematic control at this time. So if I select my hand, you can do it from any uh, final limb. That's where the controllers for IK and FK are. And then I return this back to IK. Now my red um, or my, my IK controller code color, red, it's going to drive this transformation again. And in case you missed the entire stream, you can go here into bone groups and now from IK, you can see it's red color. These are automatic colors that the uh, Rigify rig does apply to your rig, to your complete rig. So 
if you want to, for example, move the root, you know that every root in this um, object, in this character, it's color-coded pink or lilac or, I don't know, violet. I think it's violet, it's a, it's a correct word. So I'm going to go back to my manipulation tool, I'm going to press G, and then I'm going to move it, and sure enough, my character moves. But Mr. Schiller, everything else is just wandering around. Yes, no problem with that. We can continue with that later on. I just wanted to upload this video because I need to make the shorter video um, about rigging step by step from everything that we shown in the stream. But I wanted to address the the um, weights issues on the head. Why? Because every time we work here, let me click here, shape keys back to basic. That's why basis. That's why it was like that. Because every time but we work here, we have problems and no one else seems to um, give straight up solutions for that. And I want to tell you that weight painting does not have to be a pain if you know your tools around. Let me switch off the normal editing tool. And let me see what else do I need to do here. So that's it. Uh, yeah, the controller. So we grab the controller, pose mode, and now we're going to test if this is working. So I'm going to grab the head controller. We mentioned we have to place it above the head so we can, you know, rotate it and stuff. Press RR twice so you can freely move your ear bones. So the head is turning perfectly. It doesn't it's not showing any kind of problems. We have some issues here with this with this thing right here. So let's address that first. What do you say about that? All right, so object mode, let's click this. Yes, it definitely works with this. So, uh, Mr. Chiller, I have problems because if I click this and then I go into weight paint, tab, weight, paint, and then I try to paint anything here. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what is going on. I don't know anything. Can you please show me? I come from a 3D background. I have 30 some years experience. I need to know my, my way around Blender fast. Sure enough. So you have vertex group here in the properties of the uh, local uh, properties of the object. So everything here is going to change depending on the context. We explained this in the long video for the stream. So if you select here, that means that your object, the head right now, because it's explained right here, the head at scene level, the head at object level, will have the vertex group. Vertex groups are weight paints, exactly weight paints. That's why we change our mode into weight paint, but to know what we're painting and what the color num what the colors mean, we need to understand that 0% influence it's blue. That 50% influence is green or orange depending on the influence and 100% is red. And all this scale of colors, I've previously explained it in my other video. You can check it out here in the top right position. Click there, go to that video, check it out, and then come back. And now what we have here is a complete set of every other weight that it's been assigned into each individual deforming bones. So the interior of the eyes have a, have a deforming bone. So what I am interested in is to grab this entire thing and this entire thing as well. It doesn't matter if they were already assigned to a 100% complete head bone assignment. I want to, to do it again. I want to do it again manually. And I can do that by assigning the weight way down here. Okay? The weight can be assigned to a specific vertices from here or from the panel. If you can uh, select only one vertex, you can see all of the influence that Vertex has, and you can drive the weights right here manually, just like in any other software. You can do that, all right? But I don't want to do that because this is the easiest way you can get. Watch this. Alt-A on Select Everything. Click the, right there, that little vertic, Vertex, and then press L. And that is going to select everything that is connected or linked to this Vertex, okay? So you, you press L. The, the letter L as in lattice, as in large, select a vertex, L, and then you get this selected. So now I'm going to assign it a weight of 100%. Here's how I drive it. I can move this, and now I can press assign. Where? It is going to assign it to my current selection in the vertex groups, which is this moment, complete head. We already saw that when we were back on weight paint, everything that we have here in red color 
It's the complete head vertex group, or to be understood, the weight. Okay, this is the specific box, the specific um, group, vertex group that it's going to contain. But for some reason, this is painted red and it's not being influenced by the head. Why? Two reasons. Number one, another weight somewhere down the line might be um, colliding with the influences in this region. I can go and search for it and I surely will find it. Watch this. We already know that the complete head should dominate this region, right? But now we know that there possibly could be another bone, vertex weight bone, that is driving this. So let's just go all the way down, down with your arrows in your keyboard. Down, 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 down. Continue to search for it. I'm going to keep on pushing until it appears. And it did appear. Okay, it seems that the spine is influentiating that region. That's what we should be doing is locating the specific bone that is going to drive this deformation. Although in the past I have rigged it to another bone, which is spine 6, which you can activate here. Click it here. And as you can see, this is the deformation bone. This is the one that actually gets rigged to. This is the, the, the one that generates all the weight groups you see out there. And this one is called Death Spine 006. Death formation for the spine 006 bone, which is this one. So that's the bone name that we are interested in. So we come here into the bone, we copy that, copy it, exit out of edit mode, go back to object mode. And since you left that layer active, we can see this. We don't want that. Let's go back to object, I'm sorry, edit mode the layers for this activate any other layer except that one you can also do that quickly here in the end panel activating all of this this is all what we are going to work with perfect now get out of the object mode tap the head tab and enter into edit mode and now we know what the name of that the, that group was called so i'm going to click here and it's going to open this um search box Press V and sure enough, I have selection right here because I, I told it, please search for death spine 006 and it found it. So now I select it and finally I can assign my 100% to that one group. Assign. Okay, and now you can see also here in the panel that all of those vertices are assigned to complete head, head to 100%. No, I don't want that. Delete. I only want Death of Spines Reserve 6 with uh, 100 influence. This is why the, the, the outliner, the weight painting, everything else should be done at the end of the last step of the stylized series. Again, go back to post mode and sure enough, RR, it will rotate your, your, your mesh. But as you can see, there are other pieces that are not following through. So now that we know where the bone is and what the name is, I'm going to go back into the head, tab, edit mode, and then I'm going to grab all of those pieces and assign them in one go. How do I do that? I can grow the selection by pressing Control plus. So I'm going to select this with shift click, Control plus, Control plus, or rather L, automatically selecting everything else. Shift click L, or rather control plus and then L and then it will select everything and let's see from the inside I guess it's also being selected yes it's also selected uh, I guess it is selected sure enough let's go here shift click control plus L very good click L perfect Shift click L, marvelous. From inside, yeah, selected. Let's go to the other side. Again, please, please, please do not be deceived. I am doing this um, step by step because this is the common pitfalls that everyone coming into Blender falls into. Okay, I could do it in a gazillion other ways, but that's not the idea. The idea is, is to do it step by step so you can know what you can troubleshoot 
when you're creating this. It is not complex. I guess I should do this um, with a different video. Of course, we talked about that in the, the stream. I'm going to shift click this one and then control plus, control plus, 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 control plus, 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 control plus. Everything is selected. Again, here, shift click, control plus, L. Again, click, shift click, control plus, L. Shift click, control plus, L. And just to test it out, I'm going to press G and then move it. Perfect. I go, I'm going to press escape and then it will cancel escape perfect so yes we have everything selected now and then I have my vertex selected group while I am in editing mode please have that in mind and then I'm going to assign 100% weight right here assign and now you can see it has been assigned and if I go back to object mode and select this press tab enter pose mode I can finally press RR and then everything will move accordingly okay so this is the easiest, the fastest method, and the full control method that you will have. Um, Softimage specifically had one uh, button that was called Local Reassign. With that, 100% influence was assigned to the bone that you clicked. Here in Blender, you can do it this way, and this is why I'm showing you in this way. I can do it in any uh, other forms as well, but in this specific case, I am doing this um, kind of workflow, Alt-A to unselect everything, Alt-A. I am doing this uh, workflow so you can understand how to do it. Um, and in case you need to smooth the weights, you need to go back to weight paint mode. And as you can see there, you have new options right here in weights where you can normalize it all. You can uh, invert, mirror, smooth. Or even make levels. Levels is like thresholding your weights. Yes, it's cutting them uh, by a threshold, which is awesome. I can show you all of those advanced tools in 2.8. I already showed them on 2.79, but um, some of them switch places. Like in this case, everything is in on a visible top menu. Every time you switch modes, you get new menus here as well. And just to summarize it all, depending on the context of your object selection, you'll get new properties on this place and new menu options up here, as well as a new top bar for anything you do. You do. For example, I'm going to select the brush. See how all this change? Because these options will not be the same as this one. So context, please get it together. Context in Blender is very important. If you're way painting, then you're in that context, then you get tools for that matter. And if you are doing armature, then you're going to get into a different context, different properties, different top menus, different top bar. Everything here in Blender is dynamic. And that's the only frustration I see that most people do not grasp when they come here into Blender because they expect a fully uh, frozen user interface. That is not the case. That is why I decided to create the XSI mod theme. So anything and everything you see here, for example, in the outliner, you can see it reflected also out here. So if you're doing UVs, of course, you're going to edit UVs. Let me enter into edit mode and let me enter into the um, window. Of course, these are the modes, but these are the windows up here. Okay. And of course, you need to check out this because this is very important to um, orient your your um, meshes and things, elements. I'm going to go to the UV editor, and in the UV editor, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to switch the image from anything, I don't know, Clarice has head. And this is how the UVs are. So if you see here on the, on the viewport, you have yellow, which means editing. You enter the UV, you see yellow, which means editing, and of course you're going to see yellow here in the icon, which means, I don't know, editing? So this is basically why I chose to recreate this theme, because there were, there were so many different consistent things that needed to be ported from Softimage over here. So this is not the white theme, this is not the light theme, this is not anything, however you want to call it, this is the Softimage uh, exercise theme because they have good UI color coding
practices. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this one. This was um, an extensive video, I know, but I hope you really enjoyed it. Time really flies. Oh, my goodness. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button because I will be uploading a very compressed version about these things step by step. So if you're a new user, new Rhino user coming into Blender, new Cinema 4D guy coming into uh, Blender, Cinema 4D artist coming into Blender, a new Houdini user uh, coming into Blender, all of this will be uh, compressed into a 5 to 10 minute video so you can do this one two three all right thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and i hope to see you in the next video